The new selection pack just came out in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and today I'm gonna be playing the long-awaited Kashtiros and show you my version of the deck. Okay, that is my deck list and as of the truth that I was speaking about, I wanna say and warn you that this deck has times in which it just breaks or doesn't have enough bodies to continue playing through the turn and ends up on something weird like for example one Shangrira or a Shangrira with a random monster like for example Unicorn or something like that which isn't necessarily bad but consider that a warning that this deck sometimes it's a little bit inconsistent okay now moving on to the deck list i'm basically playing a pure kashira version of the deck i'm playing two copies of fender three copies rice card three copies unicorn three copies ogre with three copies bird and one copy preparations out of the hand traps i'm playing two effect waiver three maxi three ash blossom two shifter this is a necessity obviously as of the staples i played two copies called by one copy cross out one copy of the triple tactics one copy power of prosperity and i play one copy of reinforcements of the army to add the rice card to my hand every now and then oh and i forgot the imperm as well and now moving on to the most interesting part of my version of the deck and that is my level 7 extender so i played two copies of the ascendant of thunder two copies uh, three copies of the instant contact and two copies of the segmental dragon now this card has two effects one you can normal summon it without tributing but its original attack and defense becomes halved and also quick effect you can destroy this face up card on the field and if you do destroy all monsters in the main monster zone with less attack than this card for example if it's on 1300 attack because you normal summon it without tributing you can destroy everything with 1300 or below obviously i play it because of the first effect and that is because i want to have the most amount of level 7 extenders that i can possibly fit into the deck to be able to go into my rank 7s more consistently and that actually proved to be extremely useful numerous times when i played my games and this is a card that no one uses basically you don't have to use it right you can just put like a third copy of the ascendant of thunder and a second copy of triple tactics talent or like cut it completely put a second copy of triple tactics and one copy of import more but I decided to play like this and I actually ended up winning quite a bit of games because I play more extenders and I'm able to go into more XC's plays. Other than that, when it comes down to the extra deck, I played two copies of Aqua News for the instant contact, one Burnade Floor, which is basically just a Ash Blossom with a random level 7 monster. As of the XC's monsters, I play one copy Big Eye, one copy Titanic Mode, two copies Diablosis with two copies Shangrira, one copy Dark Armed, and one copy of Zeus. The Diablosis and Shangrira are the bread and butter of the deck. You want to play them turn one because you want to limit your opponent's zones because this card allows you to banish things you know i'm playing two copies of both of these you can play three copies of but it's a little bit excessive in my opinion if you're playing port of extravagance then you can play three copies of them obviously but i think that if you're not playing it you don't need them keep in mind that there are other rank 7 options you can play here so let's take you through some of the options here so what do we have so we can basically go ahead and play the mecha phantom beast draco sack but number one i don't have it number two i basically use it in the deck as a remote anyways and this is the same thing you know it's just that i cannot attack but this also cannot attack so it's the same thing it's just a removal you don't necessarily need it it's a cool card it has some cool effects but i decided to not craft it but you could craft it or if you have it just put it into the deck it's definitely a good card to play and another card i would suggest you maybe play is the galaxy tomahawk because this card allows you to continue extending off of just special summoning a bunch of tokens you can put into the deck some link place and just go build like a cool board you can go into and just continue playing from there and as of the link monsters i play one copy win one copy dark and one copy celine with access code win and dark are here as extenders win is actually interesting because a lot of people are playing kashtiras currently and you can just steal something from their graveyard just get a kashtira on your side of the field and if you can for example steal a fenrir and summon it onto the field you can then use fenris's effects and start your own combos as of celine is basically a way to get into access code a little bit easier because you can bring back effect they from the graveyard or special summon it from the hand and just basically go into um, Axis Code right here. That was it for the deck list. Now let's get into some games and see what the deck can do. Quick disclaimer, if you want to see me make a more detailed guide on how to play Kashtiras and best staples and stuff like that in different decks, let me know in the comments below. I would love to make different versions of the deck. Alright, usually I don't go for replays, but because I'm a dumb dumb, I actually forgot to record my best game ever because I forgot to click the button, you know. I was able to, uh, I, I wanted to record it. I even talked on the microphone but i didn't finish recording it i didn't record it at all so that's why i'm going on a replay so here you can see that i basically got all of my extenders in the deck i drew ogre with the ascendant of thunder with the uh instant contact to go into acid ne uh, into aqua news and also the segmental dragon and this is the most insane board i've ever done with kashiras and just the moment that i said that they are kind of inconsistent at times this is what happened this was the board 
so as you can see here i'm gonna be able to limit three of his zones in total before even his turn starts and that's because i used all of my um, extenders to go into shangri-la first then go into the ablosis then use rice card special summon it and use the effect to banish which triggers shangri-la which triggers the ablosis which triggers shangri-la and then Shang and then the ablosis effect triggers shangri-la an additional time and here you can see me having Fenrir and also Unicorn. Now I'm playing against Endymions and he uses his uh, cards to search out some things. But you will see something really interesting right now. So he's summoning, uh, let's see, so he's summoning the Mythical Beast Jakal. Now this is a really good thing to keep in mind here is that when he uses Jakal's effect, he will have to tag into something and I'll be able to chain Fenrir, banish that card, chain Unicorn at the same time as Fenrir, then use the effect of Shangri-La twice and limit all of his zones which equals a loss for him. Now that he has Servant of Endymion, he is unable to use the effect because he has only one zone. So this is his only option and if he does it, he loses the game. So keep that in mind because uh, I think he didn't actually do it, I think he played it differently here. So activating a second copy of Mythical Institution, adding the Majestic of uh, Endymion, and now he pendulum summon and that's actually really important here because this is the way he escaped my place because he is able to deal with Fenrir by attacking over it he is able to use the effect of Jakal uh, safely now okay now continuing on he uses the Jakal just as I said and he's going to tag out into Cerberus from his deck and from here he just decided to school because he had no way of beating the board regardless that's a really cool game basically that's why i wanted to showcase it okay another interesting hand i don't have any of the kashira monsters though which is really annoying even one would have been better than zero but let's activate instant contact and see what we can do oh i should have chained diff shifter okay 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 i get to i get to chain it still that's fine so uh, now i get to special summon some things i mean i'm gonna go into shangri-la obviously but yeah it's uh it's kind of annoying here so i'm gonna actually normal summon segmental dragon not special summoning the ascendant of thunder because there is no point to and i'll just end up losing 3000 life points which i might actually need for next turn and let's just go into shangri-la in this zone here set one impairment pass it's uh it's it's actually just what i said that the deck has some issues with the consistency because of the low amount of uh, cards that are actually kashiras right because not all not all the cards came out so uh yeah that's something to keep in mind here but despite that the deck's still pretty good you know normal summoning nimble beaver okay uh now you know he's playing sprites here special summoning the carrot okay by the way he actually didn't use the nimble beaver's effect because my fenry would have been able to banish it and shangri-la would have locked a zone and he didn't have a normal summon nor extender so that leads me to the uh, knowledge that he doesn't have sprite starter in his hand. Now he can detach one, then target one monster opponent controls, banish it until your opponent end phase. But he's gonna proceed to battle phase immediately, and he's gonna uh, destroy his uh, uh, attack he over uh, attack attack my Shangri-La. It took me some time to pronounce it correctly, by the way. <laughs> now going into uh, two uh, Zeus negates. That's what he's going to do, and he's gonna deal with my board pretty effectively with the Zeus, uh, which is something that I don't like obviously but you know you can't do anything about it unfortunately one zeus can just ruin your whole turn oh, yeah. now using the effect of zeus and uh, here i will implement just so he can use the other two materials and not have zeus's effect but i i you know if i don't top deck something good i will lose the game instantly so it really depends on if i top deck a kashira card here and uh, yeah he just gets to uh, destroy my whole board you know banish my whole board because of the D shifter. Proceeding to the M phase. And now I will. Uh, bro, really? Seriously? I have to. Dude, this is gonna be the most expensive rank 7 summoning ever. Minus 6,000 life points. By the way, do you see these effects on the map? These are actually so cool. I really love them. Uh, let's see. What do we go into? We could go for Big Eye, steal his Zeus. We could go Shangri-La, but uh, do we go Shangri-La? I don't think we actually do that. Uh, Diablosis doesn't do anything. So yeah, let's just go Big Eye, steal the Zeus. Um, for... No, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can get Zeus of my own, but I cannot attack using this card. Uh, what can I use that I can attack with? I can attack with Titanic Moth and go into Zeus afterwards because this card can attack directly. Now, the reason why I do this is because I will have Zeus myself and that's gonna be the best turn ever. Uh, attacking, not the best turn ever, the best possible case scenario for this turn. 
Now I get to detach one of the Ascendants of Thunder, DO2000 and main phase 2 I will go into a big fat Zeus and pray to Lord that this is gonna be enough to deal with his uh, board that he will probably set up next turn. Normal summoning the Swap Frog. Now he gets to use the effect send one level 2 or lower water monster. Uh, I will turn my button on on. Let's see what he will send. So uh, Unsporting you can return one monster you control to the hand. You can normal summon one frog in addition. So now he basically protected himself from Zeus. Because if I send Swap Rock he will be able to use Ronin Tonin and special summon it back to the field. And go into uh, any sprite cards to play the game basically. I gotta wait for him to use all of his stuff before using my effect. But. But it's gonna have to be a ridiculously good Zeus effect to be able to deal with his stuff. So keep that in mind. A Sprite Elf. Bro, I accidentally almost clicked the Zeus effect, by the way. Uh, I will still not use my Zeus effect because he can still use the Ronin Torin. You gotta keep that in mind. Swap Rock effect, like once again, sending something else to the graveyard, which it's fine. He can go Ronin Torin. And if he goes Ronin Torin, that is when... I will use my um, my Zeus, okay? It isn't once per turn, but if I don't do it, he can just go into Gigantic Sprite and deal with my board anyways. Gigantic Sprite can be someone using these two for 3200 attack and force out my Zeus. Yeah, you know what? Let's just wait. Let's just wait. It's it's an experimental case scenario because if I don't wait, he can just activate Ronin Torin once again, special summon a Sprite monster anyways. Okay, going into Gigantic Sprite, interesting, uh, you know, just what I expected, but if I don't use it now, he's gonna special summon Sprite threat and I'm not gonna get another chance to use it. So I will just use Zeus now, because I don't have the choice. I don't have a choice here. He plays Ghost Ogre, fine, he's just gonna destroy the Zeus, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't have any other choice here. And now he still has Ronin Todens' effect once again. Uh, and not only that, but he has three cards in hand, so unless I top deck something magical, I'm still gonna lose the game, unless... Oh, he doesn't have anything. Okay, card of the heart, uh, card of the hearts, dude, really? Card of the cards, guide me, that is not very good guidance. Yeah, that's not enough, I just passed the turn. By the way, why can't I... Oh, because I have only a thousand life points left, can't even use it. Summoning Ghost Bell, and that's enough to get to 1000 uh, attack. Going into Sprint, and that's just game. Okay, I wasn't able to win it. I just didn't have enough fuel. I didn't draw a single Kashira card except for one Fenrir that I special summoned uh, off of the uh, Shangri. So, yeah, that's what I was talking about. The deck is inconsistent at times, okay? Sometimes you draw well, sometimes you just draw like poop, you know? Adding took his hand, a Rhino Heart off of the field spell, okay. Activating Scream as well. Uh, I have one effect viewer in a dream, by the way. Rhino Heart effect. And I will change the effect viewer. Hopefully it's gonna be enough. Most likely it's not gonna be enough. I will have to be ridiculously lucky to be enough. Okay, it goes through. And all he's counting on is the mills from Scream. So he milled Kelbeck, which is already bad. And yeah, so let's see what he mills with Kelbeck. Milling Fenrir scream so he gets to add something uh, another copy of Fenrir and another fake viewer overall he just milled scream and now he gets to add one tier limit trap adding to his hand crime so he's gonna have a negate which I need to keep in mind when playing he sets two back row and passes turn okay um I'm just gonna start by playing uh, the usual way I'm gonna force out his negate. Oh wow, he played Max C. Dude, you know what? Do I just pass it here? It's kind of bad to pass it here, but he doesn't have anything, right? So, you know what? Go ahead, play the game, play the game. Let's see if he can kill me. I don't wanna play through Max C here because I'll probably not be able to get game immediately. Normal summoning Mudora. Okay, now he gets to mill three. Please don't mill anything good. Milling Keldo, that's not good. Fairy Tail Snow is also here, but does it, that doesn't mean he gets game here. Using two of his masters, going into Time Chief Redoer. He could have went into the battle phase first, but okay, sure. Attacking with Time Chief Redoer. Maybe he wants to go into Zeus directly, which is probably kind of what he wants to do. Uh, no, he's gonna banish the Time Chief Redoer, not going into Zeus. Rhino Hard Effect activates, allowing him to re-special summon it onto the field. Sending the halfness. Oh wow, things are not looking very good now. Because now he can use uh, Rhino Heart to add to send and halfness to fusion summon. Then he also gets to play Fairy Tail Snow, and I get to lose the game.
This was the biggest gamble I've ever done and it just didn't pay off. But it's fine. It's okay. Okay, I think this is a good point to end the video. And as you can see, Kashturas are not exactly bad at the game, but they aren't top tier either in my opinion. Even though you have some plays, a lot of times you just don't have the ability to play them unless you play like a lot of extenders and a lot of uh, draw power. And I chose to play a little bit of draw power, a little bit of extenders. You could go and add one more copy of the triple tactics talent if you want to or more draw power or like what of the extravagance some people play. It's a little bit of a weird card to play because then again you will have to play three copies of everything and you'll be limited to what you can go to you might also accidentally banish your own stuff anyways if you enjoyed the video consider dropping a like and subscribe and if you want to see more of my content i will be posting more videos about the new decks and more about kashira maybe so stay tuned for that and have a great day